everyone, it's Demi from Rockstar Priestess and welcome to the Venus Church, the weekly segment where we get to talk about all things divine feminine. And this week in Venus Church, I want to talk to you about today because today, April 1st, is a very special day in the Venus calendar. It is the ancient Roman festival of Veneralia, which was the biggest Roman festival dedicated to Venus. Venus was a very important deity for the ancient Romans and she covered so many aspects of everyday life. So let me tell you about Veneralia. Veneralia was a festival, I'm going to say it, that we probably wouldn't celebrate in the same way today. Ooh, crazy hair. Like many things 2000 years ago, it was a very different time and a very different place. Veneralia was founded around 100 and something BC and this festival was founded by the people of Rome to encourage chastity among the women of the Romans. Not what we'd normally associate with Venus, right? What had happened was some Vestal Virgins and the Vestal Virgins were some very important temple priestesses who lived in the Vestal Virgin temple in the center of Rome and they tended the symbolic flame of the Roman Empire and if you were a Vestal Virgin you had to commit to 30 years of celibacy and if you broke that vow of celibacy you would be killed quite simple so what happened was in a hundred and something BC some Vestal Virgins had sex with some fellas and they were of course murdered, killed and put to death because how very dare they and the people of Rome the fancy government people decided okay we need to make sure that our women stay pure and that they do not do these nasty naughty things so we're going to create a festival every year dedicated to helping and encouraging the women of Rome to be chaste and loyal to their husbands mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Yeah, a bit weird, huh? Weird for us. And this festival was called Veneralia. And the goddess of and oh no. The goddess there was a specific epithet for this Venus which has completely gone out of my mind, which I was talking about all day yesterday. And this version of Venus, Venus. Damn it, it will come to me by the end of this episode. Was specifically devoted, and her name was Venus something, changer of hearts, because she changed women's hearts from desire and acting on their sexual impulses to chastity and loyalty and all the things that the Roman Empire really valued. Venus Verticordia perhaps, I think that might have been her name, Venus Verticordia. So she was founded at the start of this festival. And this festival became a really, really important part of the calendar in ancient Rome and an important part of Venus worship. This was the time when married women from all across Rome and non-married women would come to the temples and offer their offerings to Venus. They would pray for help in their marriages with their husbands, with their sex lives, or they would come in and they would pray for help finding a suitable match, for finding a good marriage. Marriage was a big thing in ancient Rome, much like the last 2000 years. So this became a festival that was birthed out of something a bit punishing and controlling, something we're not altogether cool with in the 20th century, but like many things, what it turned into was something a bit different. This was a festival for the women of Rome to really ask Venus for her help in their relationships. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? So in the modern day, we're not going to celebrate it the same way that they used to. Um, a big part of Veneralia was going to the temple of Venus and the temple people would wash the statue of Venus. This would be the time of the year where everyone would come and they would wash the big sacred statue of Venus and they'd take off all her jewelry and they'd clean it and they'd re-adorn her. I think probably repaint her because in ancient Greece and Rome, 
even though nowadays we're just left with these beautiful, elegant, ghostly white figures, they would have been painted every color of the rainbow. They would have been painted figures. So I reckon she was probably repainted. I don't know, no one else thinks that, just me. And she would have been anointed and adorned and mm, offerings would have been given to her. Incense smoke would have been given to her. Very much like the Aphrodite festival of Aphrodisia, which happens later in the year around the around midsummer or the full moon closest to midsummer. Mm -hmm. And I think this is because Venus and Aphrodite are very much the same. Venus is a, not the same, but Venus is an evolution of Aphrodite. It's just like another way that Aphrodite energy went. So they do have common roots and they have common heart stuff. Yeah. So, Veneralia, hey, how cool is that? And what is the coolest thing about Veneralia is that it's at the beginning of April. And April is named for Aphrodite Aphrilis. Mm -hmm. Aphrilis is the aspect of Venus and Aphrodite who is always blooming, always opening, always blossoming. And it refers to the flowers of the spring season. And that's why April was named April after Aphrodite. We get a whole month of the year just devoted to Venus and Aphrodite. Why weren't we ever told that? How cool is that? So this month is Aphrodite April, the month in honor of Aphrodite, of Phyllis, of Venus, of all the beautiful love goddesses. And I would love to let you know that Veneralia is not the only festival of Venus we have this month. We also have the Venalia Vinalia Urbana, which is one of the two big Roman festivals of wine. Now, the gods and goddesses that really governed wine in ancient Rome were Venus, who was originally a garden goddess. She came from a marriage of an old Rome, Italian, Italy didn't exist then, but you know what I mean. An old garden goddess of fruits and vegetables and beautiful flowers married with the powerful lineage and current of Aphrodite. So, of course, Venus, earthly goods, Taurus, mm, Venus is a ruler of wine. And also to the Romans, Jupiter, who was Roman Zeus, was a ruler of wine. But the Venalia Urbana was a festival of, did I write down? No, I did not. There's a specific word for this wine, but Venus rules ordinary wine. There are two kinds of wine, my friends, in ancient Rome. There is ordinary wine, the wine for the people, the wine which we drink with our delicious Italian meals and normal people drink all day long. Mm -hmm. And then there is a second kind of wine. There is sacred wine. There is super special fancy wine that is created for, I'm assuming, super special fancy people to drink and for the ceremonies and rituals that happen in the temples. Jupiter rules the fancy wine. Venus, however, rules the wine for the people. Just like Venus and Aphrodite rule so much of regular people's life. We have this concept of them in the 21st century and this concept is not true. This concept, I think, was handed to us by the 19th century scholars who were really digging into all this um, Aphrodite stuff and all these old ancient gods and goddesses and maybe even going as far as the Renaissance. I don't know, these are just my thoughts. This 19th century view really liked to categorize things. Things like to be categorized as one thing. If you have a goddess, oh, that's the goddess of marriage, that's the goddess of sex, that's the goddess of war, that's the goddess of friends. They were all separate, but really Aphrodite and Venus, they were not. Aphrodite and Venus ruled so much so many, almost every single aspect of a regular life because they are, they are the divine manifest in the earth. That's what they are, yeah? They are goddesses of life and love. And life and love touches every part of, unsurprisingly, life. So Venus was the goddess who really ruled stuff for the everyday people. Mm -hmm. um, so for the Vinalia Urbana, which is on the 23rd of April, April the 23rd, she was honored 
as the goddess of wine that everyone could drink. Everyone could enjoy this delicious wine. Yum, yum, yum. And the goddess who was the aspect of Venus, because if we are thinking about ancient times, the goddesses and gods usually had a suffix to denote which area of life they were really all about. So for Aphrodite, she had so many little suffixes, so many little extra names, just like Demi, the priestess, and Demi, the dancer, and Demi, who doesn't close the cupboards after she uses them. Yeah, We have Aphrodite of the spring flowers. We have Aphrodite of the tombs. We have Aphrodite of the prostitutes. Yeah, We have Aphrodite for all those many different aspects. And we have a version of Aphrodite, I'm sorry, a version of Venus, which is called Venus of Sequins, which I'm very sorry, but the translation of what that means escapes me right now. But I think it was something to do with gardens. Mm -hmm. And she is the first version of Venus that we have recorded as having a temple in ancient Rome. And her first Roman temple was founded in 295 BC. And this was in Rome. And then the Temple of Venus of Sequins was the first Venus temple we have. What? Dedicated to the Roman Venus. Yeah, of course, we have Aphrodite and Inanna and Ashtoreth and Ishtar and all those lineage of goddesses that go far back into the Middle East. But the first Venus temple we have is in 295 BC. And this Venus, Venus of Sequins, ruled the Vernalia Rustica. Sorry, Vernalia Urbana. There's another wine festival in August. I'll tell you about that one later. Mm -hmm. So, Aphrodite April is packed. And I haven't even told you that the 4th of April, the 4th month, the 4th day of the 4th month, is Aphrodite's most sacred day in the calendar. 4th of April is Aphrodite's birthday. Now, I have only actually seen that written in like one or two places. But I am going with it because 4th of April is also my birthday. So me and Aphrodite are the same. I have decided for our birthdays to create. So 4th of April, big sacred Venus day. And the 4th of every month is the most Aphrodite Venus day of the month. This is how it is written. Thus is just so. So I would love to welcome you to Aphrodite April. If you're watching this in April, oh my goodness, how excited are you going to be this April? Mm. Over at Rockstar Priestess, we are doing a whole Aphrodite April thing. I am doing Aphrodite themed articles, newsletters, free gifts, classes. I'm opening up a live registration for my Venus working class, which is a powerful half introduction to super awesome goddess spirituality practices and magic, and half literally completely transform your life and have the best year of your life course. It's phenomenal and I also have some secret things up my sleeve so if you're watching this in April come on over to Rockstar Priestess we have so much to share with you if you're watching this after April come along over to Rockstar Priestess because all my Venus and Aphrodite goodies are all on my blog and you can always sign up for all my free Venus goodies all year long so I'm gonna pop a link to the um, to my newsletter and to my free gift. I have a beautiful free gift called Aphrodite's Temple. No, Aphrodite's Sacred Arts of Beauty. That's what it is. It's completely lavish and crazy. And for this month, it's free. You can get it. If it's April, you can get this for free. Amazing. And you can sign up to get that below. If you have any questions or aspects of Aphrodite you would love me to dive into, pop it in the comments. Tell me what you love about Aphrodite and what you would love to hear me talking about on a future Venus church. I'm sending you so much love. Have an amazing Venus day. Go look after yourself. Give yourself a bath. Do some dancing. Use your most expensive perfume. Go out into the world and show the world how beautiful and fabulous you are. Enjoy life. It's Aphrodite April. I'm sending you so much love. See you soon. Bye.